Okay, so we finished with our final day of notes. Yay! So make sure um, you do everything that you can uh, next week after you finish this unit to get all of your work in or as much work as you can um, before the end of the summer school session so that you pass Math 9R. Um, so let's, let's do it. Let's finish it up. All right, example number one. So here is a graph of some function. Okay, what is the average rate of change? Now, average rate of change is slope. So we have to be thinking about that formula. So let's write down the formula, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we need two points. Okay, so again, this is also called slope. So we go here to get our two points. So over negative eight less than or equal to x less than or equal to negative one. So we're looking at the point where x is negative eight and the point where x is negative one. So let's find those two points. So negative eight, that's this point right here. So it's negative eight, negative 10. If we look at the scale on the y-axis, and when x is negative 1, that's this point right here, um, which they have the same at negative 8. And at negative 1, they have the same y value. So something should happen. So in calculating the slope, it'd be negative 10 minus negative 10 over negative 1 minus negative 8. So subtract the y, subtract the x's. Well, when I subtract something from itself, or when you subtract a negative positive, we get zero. So this is zero over seven, which is zero. So our average rate of change is zero. Okay. Number two, uh, here's the function, standard function graph. Plot a line connecting the two points where x is four and x is eight. So the two points, where x is 4 and x is 8. Let's find those first. That's 4, negative 40. And 8, negative 20. This is plot a line connecting those two points. Okay. Use a line, line segment. Oh, a line segment. So I got to read more carefully, and this is important for geometry. Line segment, not line, means it's just going to end. There's no arrow. So here's the line segment. Um, use the line segment to determine the average rate of change. Well, I'm just going to practice using the formula. So it'll be negative 20 minus negative 40. And then 8 minus 4. So plus, so we get 20 over 4, which is 5. Okay, you could also, using the line segment, see that from here to here, we see an increase of 20 units over the run of increase of 4 units. So we can then just divide the 20 by 4 to get 5. But I like to reinforce and keep practicing that formula. So now we have three functions. One's a graph, one's a table, and then one's given the calculator. We need to order the average rates of change from least to greatest over these two, um, over this interval. So let's first write down the points where x is negative 4 and 2 for each. So negative 4, negative 60, and 2, 0. That's going to make it easier. Here we've got negative 4, 36 and 2, 6, and here I have to go to the calculator to type this function in. x squared minus 2x plus 14. So we've got negative 4, 38, and 2, 14. Now I'm going to calculate the slopes and then compare them. So the slopes Subtracting the y values, we've got 0 minus negative 60 over 2 minus negative 4. So again, two negatives turned into a positive. So we have 60 over 6 
which is 10. And down here, we have 6 minus 36 over 2 minus negative 4. So we get negative 30 over 6, which is a negative 5. And then last, 14 minus 38 over 2 minus negative 4. Now 14 minus 38 is negative 24 over 6, which is negative 4. So our smallest number, if we order the numbers, is the negative 5, then the negative 4, then the 10. The negative 5 went with the function g of x. So least to greatest should be g of x, then the negative 4 went with h of x, and then the greatest was f of x. So g, h, f. That one right there. All right, number four. During a snowstorm, snow fell at a constant rate for a number of hours. So that's why we see the linear function. And then linear and line. All three lines are piecewise. Then it stopped snowing for a number of hours. So it snowed, right? We have more snow on the ground. It stopped. And then it started up again at a different rate. Alexa, Alexa made a graph showing the inches of snow um, on the ground over time using the data. How much snow on the ground when the storm started? So the storm started, that's a time of zero. So I look at where time is zero, and then here. The snow on the ground was already at two inches. Okay, so time of zero here, go up, that's the point. If you look at it as a point, as zero, two. Number five, Abigail left her house and drove to the store. She stopped and went inside. From there, she drove the same direction until she got to the bank. She stopped and went inside the bank, then she drove home. The graph below shows the number of blocks away from home Abigail is driving. So here when she starts, so here she's at her house, so I'm going to put H, right? She's at her house, and we're looking at over time, how many blocks is she away from home? So here she drove to the store. So here's where she, I'm going to put, is driving to the store. She arrived at the store, right? She's not moving because she's inside. Um, there she's going to go to the bank, right? Here's where she's going to the bank. She's getting further from home. And then she stopped and went inside the bank. So she's in the bank for a while. And then she's heading home. So the number of blocks she's away from home is decreasing because she's making her way back. How many blocks is it from Abigail's house to the store? So from here, she arrived at the store, right? It took her um, eight minutes to get to the store. And this is follow it over six blocks from home. Okay, number six. So here we have two functions. Here is the quadratic. So that's the parabola. And here is the absolute value. They name it with two different letters, f of x and g of x, for a different function. Find all values of x for which the functions are equal. So functions are equal where they intersect. So they intersect at negative 2, 1. And following this straight down, 5, 8. So it just wants the value of x, so we have x equals negative 2 and 5. All right. Example 7. The stock of company A gained 4% today to get to $47. So this is a result. So equals $47.84. What was the opening price of the stock? Well, if it gained 4%, so 100 plus 4, it's at 104%. Divide by 100, that's 1.04. So it is exponential. What was the opening price? 
So our opening price is the a value, right? So it's our a value in a times b to the x. So it's, I'll call it a times b, and our x, because we are looking at just that one time period, that's going to be a 1. So we have 1.04a equals 47.84. Divide by 1.04. 47.84. Divide by 1.04. We get 46. So it says how much the opening price, 46 dollars. And our last example, here's a piecewise function. It's decreasing, increasing, decreasing. Okay, determine the intervals for which this is happening. So the function, so we're looking at segment one. So segment one, it's in parentheses, goes with this, this, and this. Um, so it's decreasing, right? So, well, let's use green. So decreasing from negative 8 to negative 3. We're always looking at the x. So negative 8, negative 3. Now, at this point, it's laying flat, right? It's not moving. It's not moving. So we have to actually look at the line piece. And then it's increasing. So segment 2, let's highlight in pink. So then it's increasing from that negative 3 to 0 on the x-axis. And last, it goes back down again for segment 3. We'll do in blue. So it's decreasing again from that 0 to 5. And that finishes our notes for the year. Um, remember to seek help if you need it, and let's work really hard uh, this next week to get our grades up to passing so that you don't have to take the class uh, next year uh, during the academic school year. Take care.